button and uh, click subscribe on that channel. But let's move on to the last topic of the panel today, and it's revolving Ollie Skip. And the question is, should we keep Ollie Skip? We... Um, We've had many a chats in the WhatsApp group about our need for a number six. I mean, Sean has made his opinions clear on that one, but we'll get his opinions again here on um, on the live stream. But we'll start off with you, Sean. Do you think we should keep Ollie Skip? Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't have the faith in him. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think if he wasn't a Tottenham lad, if he, I think if we, if we spent 25, 30 million quid on him and he came in, I think we'd all be disappointed. Standing, I, I, I have sympathies for his injury that was innocuous that turned into be turned out to be a a bigger problem. I just think he is awful on the ball. I think he's better than most off the ball. Um, I think he's a good, I think he's a good off the ball defend like defensive midfielder, but. For the Postacoglu system, what you need from the six in the Callum McGregor role is ve is a very specific set of like criteria, and that is someone who has the ability to ping the ball left and right to any like short, long, have a, a speed of thought which is incredibly quick, confidence with your ball at your feet, of which I don't think Skippy has any of those things. And then on top of that, you also need to have someone who can sit back and protect what can look like a back two if both centre backs are advanced, but in the Postacoglu system, naturally it's usually one, not the other. So the six is often, sometimes in transition, one of the final four. And do I think that Skippy's good enough with the ball in front of him? I don't. I think where Skippy's defensive capabilities are um, ahead of most others is when the ball has gone past him and he gets back. He's like a someone who can who can clamour to get back and recover. I think he's very good in that regard. But for me, I don't think he's a bad player. I like him a lot. I just don't think that he sits well in the, in the specificities of the six. Is he an eight? Absolutely not. Is he a 10? Absolutely not. If you're going to put him as a six, I just don't think he's good enough with the ball at his feet. Um, maybe he can learn to become better maybe we should loan him out rather than sell him but this time loan him to a a luton or a, someone who's a nottingham forest whatever someone that, that can use him in the premier league but as a backup to basuma it terrifies me and that is why i've been saying you know the start of this like everyone's talking about our new midfield three of basuma benson core madison yeah, it looks great on paper. Personally, I don't even see Bissouma as being a perfect fit for the Postacoglu 6. Benton Call, we don't even know what version of him is going to come back. Coming from someone that's ru like ruined his ligaments and his knees from rugby injuries, like I don't think that you're necessarily ever the same player you were before the injury. And so, even at the start of the season, assuming that Hoybier is on his way out, I, I, I don't think we have a proper six. And I don't think that Saar... I think Saar's more of an eight. And I think that Skippy isn't good enough on the ball. So, um, sorry for a bit of a rant. But in a nutshell, I think Tottenham have a lot of work to do in that in that kind of... in that specific role of the six. And I don't think Skippy's the guy. Iggy? Uh, uh, listen, uh, it's a tough one because he had a tough season last season. But then again, who didn't? Let's have it right. With the exception of Harry Kane, who really had a good season... Um, last season. So, for me, to answer the question, I'd keep him another season. I think this one has to be the one where we really evaluate him properly in, in a function. Uh, it's going to be a different midfield. It's not two in a pivot. It's going to be a three-man midfield with one holding and two alternatively going. I'd probably be intrigued to see him play like in the right centre mid where he could he can defend as well as uh, uh, go forward in the attacks. Yeah, perhaps... Um, on the ball is not the greatest, but he, he does his, his timing, his runs going forward are not, you know, are not, are not, are not at all. He did really well that season and Norwich will be in the championship. Um, and he got a few goals for them as well, going, going forward, he got a real good drive on him. Um, but I feel that Skip is a character that needs to, he needs to have the manager's belief. I think he needs to have the manager's belief a lot. You know, Conte, liked him as is M M um, Mourinho before I think he liked him as well there is something that, that, that intriguing about this guy I think he's, he plays with his heart and his sleeve yeah he made some blunders last season but then again who didn't um, 
I don't feel he's. We need to reevaluate him probably at the end of next season. I don't think he's the priority, but if you can show in the market, you can bring in another player that's get better than him, and you have to sacrifice him. Then yeah, at that point, I would. But right now, I don't think he's in the list of priorities to, to sell for me. I give him another opportunity. I would love to see him in the playing with a, in, in in what I hope to see Postecoglou is well playing. Um, I'd like to see how he gets on in a different position that he, he, he occupied last season. Um, yeah, uh, that, that, that's how I see it. Certainly, we you know physical is not about till November. And you're right, Sean, you don't know what version we're going to get off the guy. Um, so, I, I wouldn't completely change midfield. I, I, I do think it's that one area that I, I wouldn't go too crazy about, given that we're already working a lot in defence. And the full-backs are going to be very telling. So, there's one area of the pitch I won't go too crazy about. Unless we can pick someone out of the bag and say, yeah, this guy's going to really change up in the field and we have to sacrifice him along the way. Then that only on that point, I would get rid of Skip. Sean, do you think um, he's too young um, to be talking about him like that and maybe throwing him away so quickly? I'm not saying necessarily throw him away. I'm just saying I don't think he can play back up. Like, at the moment... Think about the starting eleven as you see it, right? As you, as if the season was to start tomorrow, you've got Bissouma, Hoybier, who doesn't fit any of the uh, any. Yeah, of the shut role. up, Bugsy. Sorry about Bugsy. Yeah. <laughs> Bugsy likes it, man. He likes. He doesn't like doesn't like doesn't like doesn't like to me, I, I'm not saying throw him away. I think there's a player in there. I'm, I'm a, I was a fan of Skip. I, I am a fan of Skip. I think he's a good player. I think he will become a good player. But I just, I think you have to look at the horses for the courses. And I think that we are, what, we are changing our system dramatically. And you have to take into account what is asked of certain roles in, in under the, under the Postecoglou system. And the guy who plays the six has to be brilliant on the ball he, everything starts through him everything starts once the defender breaks the line they give it to the six and the six is the guy who pings it left and right and then when the ball isn't at his feet or in the in Tottenham's feet it's going to be coming back his way he has to be the guy who can defend and and stand up and if the ball gets past the player doesn't players that I look at that are the perfect fit are players like Manuel Ugarte who's gone to PSG players like at Sofiane Amrabat, who is probably going to go to Manchester United, and why Tottenham aren't going to beat it? His number is 30 million. Is bonkers. Players like Zuba Mendy from Real Sociedad, brilliant player that could do the job. Players like Locatelli from Juventus, and Tottenham have got a relationship. I think he'd be a fantastic player. There are players out there. I'd even go as far as to say Calvin Phillips. I think would be a really, really good player if it wasn't for the fact that he's five foot nine. Because I do think that the person who plays in the six also has the threat of balls coming over the top and you need to be decent in the air. But there's players out there that Tottenham can go after that can really help in the six. Because I think that Bissouma is going to sit in there for the time being. But actually, whilst we don't know what's happening with Benson Core, you push him forward and then you get someone in who's a proper number six. There's players out there. And for me, I just look at Skip and think... He's not good enough with the ball at his feet. Have do any of you disagree? Do any of you think that he is a ball playing? I wouldn't play him in a six, Sean. I wouldn't. I, I, I'd be. I'd give him a bit more license to go and, and join the, the the attacking side of the game. I, that's my feeling because I think he played a couple of games. I think the Chelsea one where he was given a little bit more freedom to go and he in the league one like from edge of the box. Like and you think, you know, there's more to. The, I honestly believe. There's more to this player, and what I like him at the sense of it all is 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 giving it all. He's giving you always. He never spares himself, even when he's playing badly or not great. Yeah. He's giving his all, and that for me is a great base to have as a player. You because there are other sides to his game for sure that needs improving, and I think with the right guidance and, a, and 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 definitely a manager that truly believes in him, we can get, have a player. I don't think he's going to be. Top of the top elite, a raptor, or anything like that. I'm absolutely, I'm not saying that, suggesting that for a second, but I do think there is a squad player there that can be part of a team, a midfield, where the main man requires a rest here and there. He can fill in those uh, those gaps. So, uh, listen, I'm not saying he's completely I just, like, I, I, unstable. I just, I he's not good enough on the ball, I, mate. I, I just if think he's not good enough on the ball in a six. He's not good enough in an eight. He's not. But if you can go and get me, I'm, I'm about for 30 million. 
he, he, we have to sacrifice him, then yeah, I'll say, yeah, go and do it. Absolutely go and do it. But then again, those are the kind of players, I'm saying statement signings, where you think, you know what, your midfield changes from like this to like this. Yeah, 30 yeah. million for Amber, but go and get him. Go and get yeah. him. We, we need a player like that. This is the kind of st- defenders, top, top Sobia, Amrabat. Those are the kind of players that will change your team massively. For 30 million, do it. These are the kind of things that I'm looking at the board to do. And the, and the frustration of what Sim was saying earlier on in, in, in the show, where you know we always seem to we're going to the cheapest option rather than the best option. We shouldn't be, we, we can't go toe to toe with Man United as in get into an auction or get into a bidding war with people like that. That's why we need to act early and get them in. Iggy, for me, like, just, the, the, the reason why, gives... right? Iggy, you go and get a Sofiane Amrabat, not only does it solve the six, it also solves the fullback wingback situation. Because you've got a guy then that can sit in front of... Yeah, they of can go. Oliver and he can sit in. Yeah. Romero. You've got a guy then that you know the ball comes up this way or down on the floor and Amrabat can go and smash it. You've got the confidence to say to your doji, yeah, go and join the front five and don't worry about it so much. You've got the confidence to say to Pedro Porro, go and do what you want to do. Don't worry about it so much. Without Sofiane Amrabat, if you've got Bissouma sat in front of Romero and Tapsoba or Romero and Van der Ven, I think Tottenham are going to get turned over in a couple of scenarios yeah. next season. And that, to me, is an issue. It's an issue. Come on, Sim. I disagree with Sean quite heavily, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think, for, well, first we'll touch on the, t- on the topic that we have, what we're talking about is Oli Skip. Yeah. I, think he, I think he is a six. I think that is his position. I think before his injury, one of his big strengths, I'm not saying he's like a Perlo on the ball, but I do think his passing is uh, better than what you're saying it is. I think his, one of his biggest strengths was his awareness, his ability to turn on the ball, his ability to keep possession. Um, uh, I think, uh, I remember very clearly Clearly, one of the clips when he was first breaking into the team, when he was we were, um, England were playing Holland under 21s, I think it was Frankie De Jong saying, "Oh my God, that Oli Skip, I can't get near him. He's uh, he's um, he's he's, a, he's really annoying to play against because I just can't get close to him, and he keeps um, getting away from me." I'm not saying that Oli Skip should be our starting number six next season. I think he is good enough to be a backup number six. I think that he, uh, in the games that he's required for, um, I, you've got to remember as well, last season, yes, he didn't have the best uh, end of the season. Uh, first of all, when he did break into the team, he was pretty good against the likes of AC Milan. He scored against Chelsea, uh, West Ham. I remember a lot of games he was really good. And what, what, what I think for me, what happened was we were asking him to play too, um, too, um, too much football, essentially coming back from a very serious injury he wasn't really expected to play as much football as he did last season as, um, essentially he was uh, he was asked to it because we had injuries to Ben Tenko Basuma got injured for three months and all of a sudden Skip had to play pretty much the last three months of football uninterrupted and I don't think he was ready for that um, I think he, when he first broke into, into the team he was pretty good but I don't think he was ready to play the amount of football that he did but when, when he was when he was at his peak finish I think he was playing really well and I, I disagree that um, uh yeah, mate, look, based on last season and how we ended last season, you could argue that he's uh, not good enough on the ball. But I'm, if I'm basing it on what Skip was when he was first on his loan deal at Norwich and when he was first breaking to the Tottenham under Conte before that serious injury, mm. um, he was really good in, in, in his oh, ability to, like, to, to get away from players and, and keep possession. Yes, he's got so he's 22. He's got some work to do on the ball, on his passing range. He has got some oh, work mate. to do. But he's but I think to be back up um, at 22 years of age, I think he's good. He's got good awareness and discipline off the ball as well to play that position. I think he could do a good job of back up in number six, in my opinion. And I think it, I think it's worth uh, keeping him around. Uh, we know that he's got uh, w- um, he's very highly thought of around the club as well. Um, if we're basing it off his last 10 games or so of last season, you can no. you can very well make the argument, yeah, he's not good enough. But I, I don't want to judge him based on that. I want to I, I want to judge him based on how he looked when he first broke into the Spurs team. And also last season, when he first came back from injury, he was looking really, really good. I think he played too much football. Not only was he overplayed, but he was also played in a in for th- of different managers, and everyone was all over the place. It wasn't just him. So I would give him an, I would give him the backup role as number six. And for me, um, I think Basuma. So you'd, be, you'd, be ha- you'd be happy right now, Sim, to the, for the start of the season to come in with Udoji at left back, who's mm-hmm. untested in a fullback situation. 
Horror yep. at right back, Romero, and let's say taps over for the sake of argument. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that we go big in the left side centre back and Skippy in the six. Basuma. Basuma in the Benson core role, Madison in front. And you think we've got enough defensive. Uh, um, Sean, security. rephrase the way you said Skippy there. Say it in a more positive light, please. Wait, sorry. sorry again. <laughs> I'm joking. Again. I'm joking. No, I'll have, have Basuma in the six. I'll have Basuma in the six. Basuma in the six, and who? So, so then who in the eight? Hoybier or Ndombele? No, he's, he's saying Skip as a backup. He's saying Skip as a backup. Do you not feel that Skip could, could play in the eight? I know he's not. Is is a good six? I think he's a good six. I don't, I don't think he's, he's good great. enough going forward, in my opinion. I would rather him in the six, where he's where he but only contributes. The, 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 the six in the post system do, is the do creator. Bits there. He is good. He, I think he's. Uh, I think he's better on the ball than you give him credit for. He was. Well, that was one of his biggest strengths when he's bringing to the team. His awareness on the ball, his ability to um, uh, what's it called to know when he's being pressed. He's, he's he's very mature. He's got really good game understanding. Obviously, look, he's not the best on the doubt, ball. I don't anyone. doubt his maturity and stuff. I'm just sitting there saying, when you put the ball at his feet. What yeah, he can turn and pass it. Him to be able yeah. to pin the ball forty yards to the left into Sunny. He can do that. He can do that. No, he's got, he a, good, he's got a good passing range. He does. No, he can't. He's not a Perlo, as I said. He's not. He's not an unbelievable passer. Nothing but I like think a as a backup Perlo. role, I think he can do it. I think he can do it. I think he can it's do not it. a backup role. It's not a backup role when the season Why? starts. Basuma will starts, play the six. Basuma, but if Basuma himself isn't good enough and the specificities of the six. The six is not a traditional six. The traditional six is someone that just sits Andrew there and And you have to work with what he's got. You can, Andrew's you six can do is that. different. Andrew's six is the quarterback. You need someone who has got the absolute confidence to be able to just control the ball. Like how good Benton Corey is on the ball. Benton Corey would play the six. If you had confidence in Benton Corey's ability to shepherd and marshal the back four when we don't have the ball or in transition, then the best fit for the six is Benton Corey. It certainly isn't Skip. It's no chance, in my opinion. Yeah, listen, Skip is backup, right, I'm saying. It's never going to be Skip. I think Skip is good enough to be backup in the number six, in my opinion. And I, I don't see how, in, in terms of profile of players, why Amrabat is so much better than Basuma and what he can do. I think they've, they're they both profile fairly similarly. And yes, Basuma, I think Basuma's played in the base of a midfield three before. And I think Ange can train him up. I think he's got the qualities to play that role. I think he's got really good press resistance. I think he's got a good passing range. I think we don't have, I think the reality is our, the, our in terms of our passing ability in the field, apart from now Madison, we don't have that elite passing ability right now in, in, in our midfield. We've got good passes, but not amazing passes. And, and maybe that's what you're calling for. And I do think, oh, by and large, that's what we do need. But I do think we can get by for now with what we have and make adjustments. And then maybe next year, I think we've got a lot to do. I'd rather spend the money on top centre-backs and make do with Pesuma and Skip than go cheaper on a centre-back and 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 go bigger on a number six right now. I think we have players who, in my opinion, we're in with with, ben, with Basuma, Skip and Saar. We have, in my opinion, we have three players there who all three might not be perfect for that role, but I think in the short term can all be trained to play it, in my opinion. They all have the quality to play at an OK level. That will that'll be good enough to get us by for this season, and then next season we can think about getting a really elite passer. And I don't think we're getting that this window. I think right now it's all more about getting elite centre-backs who can really cover a lot of ground and com come to in wide areas and... and um, and obviously we and getting we got the winger. I think those are more important things right now than getting a number six. I I agree. We probably don't have perfect number sixes, but I think in the short term, in Basuma, Skip, and Saar, we have enough just to get by. Do you not think Saar can play the six? No. Nope. Why not? Um. Oh well, I haven't seen. I'm not sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have said no. I'll say don't know. I don't think I've seen enough of him. I don't think anyone has. To have the confidence, I think we've only really Tottenham have only really seen him play ninety minutes of excellent football that set a kind of benchmark where everyone thinks now that this guy's got the nuts or the stones to do it, and that was Milan away. I thought, and I thought he was excellent, really, really good in that position. But you know, w w explain to me why 
um, he never got the minutes after that night. You know, every, like yeah, that, that I was baffled to be honest because we were, all baffled, we were baffled because you, Sim said before, and he was absolutely right. Skip was playing week in, week out after that, never got a rest. I agree. When we had Sar just sitting there, why why didn't he play more? There was there was no reason for it whatsoever. But in terms of the argument uh, that you guys were having before, I kind of do lean more towards what Sim is saying. I think that there are more pressing issues in the squad and I think the centre-back situation definitely needs to be looked I, at sorry, and, and to a higher really, quality. I actually agree with Sim on that point as well. I'm not sitting here saying that we scrimp on the centre-backs to go and get Amrabat. I'm not suggesting that. I, I still, I 100% agree. You've got to get the centre-backs in and go big on there and we'll, we'll have to deal with the six. We've got so much to change and things take time. Sorry to interrupt, Ben. But yeah, I agree with I agree with Sim on that point. I just think that Skippy isn't good enough in the long but run. But I don't, I don't believe that he's as bad on the ball as you're saying. And I don't think he's as good as on the ball as maybe as Sim saying, or maybe he's not even saying that. But I, I do feel that potentially he... I have a feeling that he could be a bit too limited um, technically to play in an Ange system as the number six. But I'm willing to give him the shot if Ange wants to do that. And also, I think the, probably the best course of action might be to loan him out for a year to play consistent minutes in the Premier League. I think that's probably the best course of action. But if we're going to go hard on the centre-backs, we're not going to go hard on the number six. And I believe to replace an Oli Skip and to get someone in that number six, we probably do need to go hard in that position. So I do kind of see it a bit as uh, being a bit unrealistic, this transfer window. I just think we're going to get rid of Hoiberg, which which looks like he's got a bit more marketing, and then we absolutely have to keep Skip for at least another season, uh, in my opinion, just to have a, as a squad player. Um, he's not for me. I said, like I said earlier, it's not a priority for me to sell immediately. I don't think. I think we should review that, for, uh, look at it in, in a different um, viewpoint, for, uh, leave it to another season. I think see how he does for the reasons that also seems you know overworked, overplayed. And and we need to review that. I don't think he's done he's done bad enough that we have to get rid of him straight away. I, I just think the priority to go elsewhere. I think midfield we've got the numbers. We've got Bentacle coming back. Madison is going to give us a bit more creativity that we've been badly missed. And I think that the, the balance there right now it's not amazing, but it's not bad, bad, bad either. Um, I just, I just write like, like like us to prioritize other areas, and then slowly, slowly we look at the midfielder further down the line. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to chime in on this one? I think we've covered all areas. Covered all areas covered. So do you want to finish off uh, just going through the Super Chat?